In this video, I'll show you how to build this micro cinematic drone. It's called the QAV Cine Freibot Edition and it's small enough to fly indoors. We'll be using a pair of 2mm carbon fiber plates, the JHE MCU all-in-one flight controller and 4-in-1 ESC, the Lumineer Freibot 1205 5500KV motors, and the DJI compatible Cadex Vista with the Nebula Pro FPV camera. First, we need to solder these little motor plugs to the flight controller. While it's better to solder the motor wires directly to the pads, these make the build a lot easier to assemble and repair. Just be careful not to load your iron with too much solder and lightly tap the side of each prong to solder them in place. It's a good idea to keep some solder wick handy because it's really easy to use too much solder and bridge the pads. Now let's mount the flight controller to the frame. You'll want to use these longer M2 screws and we'll only be using three of them. The last one will just get in the way of the battery leads. Now you can squeeze these little vibration dampeners into the slots. They aren't symmetrical, so make sure you've got the deeper side pointed downward. Also, make sure you've got your frame oriented correctly. The battery lead should point toward the rear. Secure it with some M2 nuts, and you'll want to get these pretty tight so that the board nearly makes contact with the bottom plate. Give it about a 2mm clearance. This is because you need to make enough room above for the Cadex Vista. Now let's make the battery lead. Now I like to use this fun tack to hold it. You don't even really need a helping hand tool to build a drone, so save your money and buy a pack of this stuff instead. Now, otherwise, this is all pretty straightforward, but I really do prefer a flight controller that comes with a pre-assembled battery lead. As always, it's easiest to solder the wires to the plug before you solder them to the board. I trimmed about 2 centimeters from the wires to save a little weight, but that's entirely optional. And rather than use the holes, I soldered over them to create pads. Finally, make sure the solder penetrates all the strands to make a solid connection to the board. You want to mount the capacitor under the battery leads so it doesn't get tugged on by the wires. Bend the wires over the pads so you know how much shrink tube to cut for the exposed wire and solder them directly on top. Again, make sure the solder fully penetrates the strands down to the pads by holding the iron on top for a couple seconds. Finally, cut off the excess wire and now we've got power. Remove the outer screws from the bottom of the Cadex Vista so we can mount it to the frame and prepare the pads for the wires. Since we're using the DJI remote, we'll be using every wire except the second ground. If you're using a different radio, you'll want to exclude the SBUS wire and solder your receiver separately. Before we attach it to the flight controller, let's add the standoffs. It's better to get this out of the way now. Also, I forgot to add the little rubber feet to the outer rings, so be sure to do that. Now let's prep the pads, cut the wires, and give yourself at least 5 centimeters of slack so you've got some wiggle room. Strip and tin each of the wires. Solder the black wire to ground, red to 9 volts, RX to TX1, TX to RX1, and SBUS to SBUS. Attach the side plates to the camera using the shortest M2 screws and make sure you've got it right side up. Remove the corner screw from the Vista to release the antenna bracket and pass the antenna through the top plate before you snap it in. This will give you a little more antenna height for better reception. Carefully snap the bracket back onto the little peg and secure it with the screw. Now before we button this thing all up, let's plug all the motors in. Use these longer M1.6 screws to mount the Vista to the top plate where the USB-C plug is at the bottom pointed toward the front right motor. Now I get to screw everything together. I just secured the top plate with a couple screws and moved on to the motors. It's easiest to put a single screw onto the motor and just hang it from the frame before adding the rest. Since we didn't cut the wires, we need to do a little wire management here. Zip tie them to the frame and make sure they don't get in the way of the props. And it's also a good idea to zip tie the camera cable to the frame because we don't want that getting torn up by the props either. Now let's finish putting all the rest of the screws in and that's it for the assembly. You might want to use some blue Loctite on the motor screws, but as long as you check them during pre-flight you should be fine on such a small rig. Finally, you can add one more zip tie to secure the battery lead to the frame and to hold the antenna in place. Stick the battery pad onto the top plate and now we can activate the Cadex Vista and update the firmware using a USB-C cable on our computer. Plug your DJI FPV goggles in and put them into bind mode. Plug a battery into your quad and press the bind button on the Cadex Vista. When the light turns green, you are bound. If you're using the DJI FPV remote, turn it on and put it into bind mode by holding these three buttons. Press the bind button on the Cadex Vista and the LED should turn green. I tried a variety of props and the gem fans on the right run pretty hot, so I recommend the HQ props or the iFlight Nazgul's. I'm going with the Nazgul's 
and you want to mount them right side up. That means the top of the prop needs to touch the top of the motor. It's very important that you secure the props, so line the holes up and secure them with the included M2 screws. The kit comes with these pretty cool battery straps, and to use them you need to push the elastic bit through these little holes and pull it up over the peg. Don't just wrap them around the peg or they'll pop off. Now if you want to mount a naked GoPro or the SMO4K, you need to 3D print some adapters. They wrap around this standoff which screws to the front of the rig. I'll be sure to link the STL files in the description. With the SMO4K it weighs 177 grams, with a 4S550 mAh pack it weighs 244 grams, and with 650 it weighs 257 grams. With a naked GoPro Hero 8 it weighs 173 grams, with a 550 mAh pack it weighs 240 grams, and with a 650 mAh pack it weighs 252 grams. Now let's take it for a flight. I did a video shoot at my local library and it flew great. This was recorded on a naked GoPro Hero 8 and stabilized with Real Steady Go. I ran the video feed at 50 megabits per second and had no reception issues throughout the entire library. This rig is perfect for indoor footage. It'll fly outdoors just fine, but it gets tossed around if there's a bit of a breeze. In terms of flight time, it'll go anywhere from 3 to 5 minutes depending on the pack you use. I prefer 4S650 mAh packs, which go for about 4 minutes but you can get 5 minutes on 850 milliamp hours. Now these motors do run quite hot. To help with that, you need to run the ESCs at a 48 kilohertz PWM, and for that I recommend either the JESC firmware or the Jazz Maverick firmware. Here I'm running JESC. You also want to be careful with your PIDs and filters as those also affect the motor temperature. Look for the rotorbuilds.com link in the description for a step-by-step -step guide to configure this in Betaflight, as well as my PID, rate, and filter settings. If you didn't already know, rotorbuilds.com is my website. I come from a web development background, so I wrote it from the ground up. If you haven't been there, check it out. We've got over 10,000 builds and more than 80,000 FPV build picks. Also, I recently started a TikTok, and it's really blown up. My username there is rotorbuilds. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and subscribe for more FPV builds.